Reducing social exclusion in old age is the aim of Rosenet, a network of European experts in the field of aging. There are 135 of us from 41 countries, and we have an evidence-based policy message to report. We ask you to guarantee the minimum pension levels, to provide accessible housing, and affordable and accessible social and health care. We also ask you to offer support during life transitions and understand the importance of diversity in old age. Let's go to Brussels to meet some of the top experts of Rosenet and to hear why such policies are needed. Old age exclusion is a comprehensive form of disadvantage that impacts on the lives of people in later life. It can involve disadvantages or inequities with respect to choice and control, resources and relationships, and power and rights. But what's a key aspect of this is that it can involve an impact on everyday parts of people's lives. Old age social exclusion is a public policy challenge for a number of reasons. But it's not just because of demographic ageing patterns, where the number of older people are increasing and the diversity of those older people are increasing, but it's because this form of disadvantage can impact on individuals, it can impact on households, it can impact on communities, and it can impact on wider society. So it's very much multi-level in the way it uh, affects people. The other issue that we do need to consider is how um, at the moment, our public policy sometimes can have a very narrow focus on what issues are for older people. So it only considers one aspect or two aspects of everyday life, rather than pulling in a full picture of people's lives. And that's a key element that we need to think about. So I think there are two priorities to tackle economic exclusion in old age. One is ensuring that there are decent pensions, adequate levels of pension income uh, in retirement, and that means paying attention to uh, uh, policies like providing universal minimum pensions. And another area is ensuring that uh, older citizens have adequate resources to enable them to either stay in their own homes through uh, uh, financing adaptations or to move uh, to uh, appropriate accommodation if they're no longer able to stay in their own homes. Service-related social exclusion takes place in several areas, but three of them are particularly relevant in later life and these are health and social care, transportation, and new technologies. Public investments in social protection and health care, for instance, can help prevent material deprivation, while proper training of care professionals help to facilitate users accessing them. As for transportation, appropriate policies in this area can help users to uh, participate until later life in employment, uh, shopping, cultural and religious activities. ICT and new technologies can help accessing services too. However, a prerequisite for that is digital literacy and policy is badly needed to uh, facilitate that, especially among the least educated. So the community and spatial-based ex social exclusion is a very complex and multi-layered uh, concept. It can involve things such as staircase in your home or um, very heavy doors at your elevator, which is then inaccessible. But also it touches issues such as the speed of the green lights at the pedestrian crossings or the feelings of safety when you walk outside your home. So it's very important to have uh, good policies which in this case would be um, age-friendly policies on age-friendly environments. Uh, that would include age-friendly uh, communities, cities, neighborhoods, uh, because to have really um, safe, friendly and inviting environment is very important for uh, us when we grow old and especially where there are higher risk of functional limitations.
exclusion from social relations is really damaging for individuals' well-being as they age. One of the most important outcomes of recent research on ageing is to show the strong relationship between loneliness and poor health outcomes in old age, that people who are lonely are more likely to die prematurely, they're more likely to be in ill health than people who are not lonely. So there are key parts of the life course where people experience losses associated with bereavement or where people migrate from one country to another or move house from one neighbourhood to another neighbourhood and lose their local social relationships perhaps or when people retire from the labour market and lose contacts with, uh, with friends and work colleagues. So there are potential responses that we can introduce at those key transition points. We should also be thinking about a public health approach that focuses on maintaining people's incomes in later life. Because having a decent income means that one can also afford to support the social relationships or the ways in which one accesses social relationships later in life. Going to the cafe, having a meal with a friend. So symbolic exclusion, it's about the way in which ideas and representations of old age and ageing affect the way in which people intend to um, be a part of society. It might inadvertently be so, but it does make an effect. Civic exclusion, it's actually the way in which people participate, and that's the area that has received the least attention by scholars and policy makers. And it could potentially be because we do not tend to think of older people as people that naturally will participate in society. Political participation, for example, has received very little attention. And the attention that has been received has completely neglected the diversity of older people that we nowadays have. When it comes, for example, for older migrants, one of the largest groups that we're seeing within our borders here in Europe there's very little attention having been paid to the way in which they participate politically. Mm -hmm.